On the 7th of the 7th, AMD released 7 nanometer GPUs and CPUs. They weren't the first 7 nanometer products. That honor went to, wait for it, Radeon 7. But these are the first 7 nanometer products that matter. Being the first to 7 nanometers gives AMD an advantage over their rivals, and will be the best chance they have of beating them that they've had in a long time. So in this video I'm going to investigate which launch was best, their CPU launch or their GPU one. Now I think it's pretty obvious that the most important one for them to get right was their CPU lineup, because the market for processors is a lot bigger than that for graphics cards. AMD had been vastly behind Intel for years, but made an astonishing comeback with their Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series. But this 7 nanometer 3000 series launch was another big one to get right. It was to be the first major revision to Zen, and would determine whether AMD just got lucky first time, or if they could follow it up with another innovative success. But while their CPUs were the most important to get right, I think their 7 nanometer Navi GPUs had more potential to be exciting, because it was a given that their CPUs were going to be good. But AMD's GPU division has struggled these past few years, releasing products later than Nvidia and with inferior power consumption and flagship performance. And I don't think that hopes were high for this 7 nanometer Navi launch either. We've been waiting a long time for it, and in order to stand a chance against Nvidia's 2000 series, it needed to significantly improve on AMD's previous GPUs in a number of ways. So this is why I think it's interesting to investigate which launch was best, because it isn't a simple thing. Another factor to consider were the expectations we had for them. I think that expectations were insanely high for AMD's CPUs. Their current offerings were already competitive, but for the first time in over a decade, 7 nanometer Zen looked ready to steal the crown from Intel in every way. Intel are stuck on 14 nanometer plus 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 plus, so for AMD to be on a far smaller, more efficient and superior 7 nanometer process gives them a huge advantage. Add to that all of the optimizations made to this new Ryzen design and I think that people were expecting Intel to be dead in the water following this launch. As it was, I think that sky-high expectations detracted from the CPU launch somewhat. The Ryzen 3000 series is an excellent lineup, and as good as it needed to be, and I think that some people deem it to be a disappointment simply because it didn't beat Intel in every benchmark. Thanks to more gigahertz, Intel CPUs still perform better in some activities, and in games at lower resolutions. It's just as well I'm not on AMD's marketing team. I always thought the slogan for the Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series should have been, good enough because they might not always perform as quickly as Intel in every situation, but it doesn't matter because they're still good enough, and will generally give you more threads for your money. And now I'm going to upgrade that slogan to… close enough, because they are generally faster than the rival Intel CPUs, and even when they aren't, they're still close enough that it doesn't matter. Also, AMD's CPUs were plagued with motherboard and driver issues that worked against them at launch. AMD promised that their new CPUs would work on older motherboards but that has led to weird problems where motherboards don't come with enough memory to remember all of the CPUs they're supposed to be compatible with. I think it's noble of AMD to try and do this, but unfortunately it's worked against them and people are frustrated with the issues that have resulted from this goal. Also, these new CPUs promised clock speeds that they simply can't reach. Whether this is a problem with the drivers or misleading advertising remains to be seen, but again it's something that's working against otherwise very good products. And there are issues with Windows power settings, similar to those experienced by the original Ryzen's. I'm hoping that all of these problems can be ironed out with time, but they have hampered AMD's CPU launch and have resulted in some disappointed customers who may have expected the processors to ship in a better state. Now we move on to Navi, AMD's first, important 7 nanometer graphics cards. Before now, they were reliant on Vega and Polaris to battle Nvidia's lineup. Polaris is an old, mid-range creation designed to be cheap to manufacture and intended for the masses. It came out three years ago and is starting to look a little long in the tooth. Prices have dropped to bargain levels and they're still decent for 1080p gaming. But it's 2019 now and I think a lot of buyers will be wanting to get something a bit faster and more future proof. Vega is slightly newer and was AMD's high end graphics card series, but against Nvidia's cards, Vega came out late and consumed a lot more power. It was a troubled launch, but like Polaris has dropped in price to bargain levels as of late and is still a viable option for 1440p gaming. But I think AMD will want to replace these cards with something cheaper to produce, since with Vega's expensive memory I don't think they'll be making much money on these cards. Radeon 7, released earlier this year, remains AMD's fastest graphics card. It's Vega, but shrunk to 7 nanometers and clocked higher. I think it was launched just so that AMD could say it was the first to 7 nanometer and because it was the fastest thing they could make. 
it's only available in limited quantities and following Nvidia's price cuts, has become rather pointless. Especially since Navi is almost as fast, for significantly less money and with an improved architecture. Just so you know, Radeon 7 has 60 compute units, while Navi manages almost the same performance with just 40, thanks to its new design. I think that Navi was meant to be like the new version of Polaris, but as things have happened, it also needed to replace Vega. In other words, Navi needs to be affordable, it needs to be fast, and it needs to be appealing when compared with Nvidia's 2000 series of graphics cards. That's a lot it needed to do, and it's only available in two rather similar versions the 5700 and the 5700 XT. There wasn't a lot of hype about these cards before release. I think people expected it to be the last series based on old technology, a stopgap before something better came along. And then it was announced and it was more expensive than people had hoped. Its prices were competitive with Nvidia's offerings, but all these cards were generally considered overpriced and I think everybody was hoping that Navi would kick off a price war of some kind. Unlike AMD CPUs, I think it's safe to say that expectations were low for their GPUs. And then, to add insult to injury, Nvidia announced their Super 2000 series lineup, which was sort of like their standard 2000 series, but faster and it looked to undercut Navi's prices even before the cards had been released. I also think they were launched to smother review sites with Nvidia cards, so Navi's launch kind of got lost somewhere. Following the Super announcement, Navi looked dead in the water, and I think everybody was ready to give up on it. But a few days before release, AMD announced price cuts and suddenly everybody got excited about it again. Some saw this as a 1000 IQ play from AMD, but I don't think it was. AMD was simply avoiding a price war before they could make some fat margins on their new products. Nvidia always does something to ruin AMD launches, so they simply had to wait for that, to see what it was, and then to retaliate accordingly, to have the last laugh. To add to this, Navi turned out to be… better than expected. It wasn't going to steal the crown from Nvidia's 2080 Ti, which remains much faster than any other card out there but both the 5700 and 5700 XT were powerful enough to trade blows with Nvidia's 2060 and 2070 cards, which, let's face it, are at price points that most people are going to go for. And thanks to a new architecture, and perhaps the jump to 7 nanometer, Navi was competitively power efficient, which is the first time in years I can say this about AMD's GPUs. Of course, Nvidia is still on 12 nanometer, so simply by moving to 7, they'll likely end up more power efficient than AMD again. But the key thing to note here is that Nvidia are not on 7 nanometer, and as far as the buyer should be concerned, AMD and Nvidia are currently equal in power efficiency, so are both equally appealing in that way. As well as this, Navi has an answer to Nvidia's DLSS anti-aliasing. It's called Fidelity FX, and is pretty much a sharpening filter that gives the illusion that you're gaming at a higher resolution than you actually are. Honestly, it's just a sharpening filter. I don't see it as anything special, but that's okay because while Nvidia's DLSS may be the more advanced approach, it's been rubbish so far and has a larger performance hit than AMD's solution does. If AMD can beat AI with a simple sharpening filter, then good for them. And they found a way of reducing input lag. Nvidia responded by saying that their cards have always done that, but tests have shown that Navi is indeed superior in this regard. However AMD have done it, they found a way of making their cards more responsive than any that came before, and that will be something that competitive and pro gamers will be interested in. It's good to see AMD adding value to their products with features such as these, because they're not the only ones who are doing it. The only concern with Navi, in my opinion, is the lack of ray tracing. I strongly believe that this will be the last generation of cards to not support it in some capacity. If you say Navi doesn't need it, that's good, you'll be happy with these cards. But while ray tracing may currently have limited use, it is still a thing and it does still have value, and this value will allow Nvidia to charge a premium for the cards that support it. I think it will be a number of years before ray tracing is seen as an essential feature, by which time all companies will have improved their support for it. It's up to you whether you think it's an important thing to factor in when considering your next graphics card. Although AMD's GPU launch may have been less competitive against Nvidia than their CPU launch was against Intel, I still think that Navi was the most interesting product to be released, and the most game-changing given the stale state of the GPU market. They got the price, the performance, the features and power efficiency right making the 5700 series a compelling product. And there's more. 5700. That leaves space above and below, and using only 40 compute units, there's a very real chance that there may be room to squeeze more in for a 5800 series. I've said already how a 40 compute unit Navi is almost as fast as a 60 compute unit Vega, so imagine what a 64 compute unit Navi could achieve. And this wouldn't have to consume insane amounts of power either, thanks to Navi's improved efficiency. This is where lower power consumption pays off. 
and this is just at the high end. Imagine what they could do on the other end of the spectrum if they crammed these Navi cores into their APU range. I've already tested their older, Vega based APUs, and they're decent budget options, but switching to Navi will make them so much better. Navi has the potential to shake up things at all price points, so I'm very excited to see what becomes of this graphics card lineup. In my opinion, AMD's GPU launch was the best, because it changed the face of the market the most. On the CPU side of things, Ryzen has kind of spoiled us already by doubling what number of cores we'd expect at any given price point, so I think that many people will already have upgraded this part of their system. But on the GPU side of things, prices haven't come down in years, so Navi may be the cards to initiate the price drops in the higher end that many gamers have been waiting for before upgrading older systems. Navi puts AMD back in the race after being behind for a while, and I'm excited to see which other products they end up releasing using its new architecture. But at the end of the day, it's their CPUs that will sell the most. I'm seeing more and more people sporting an AMD CPU, even for gaming builds. While Nvidia continues to dominate the graphics card market, AMD's CPUs are growing in popularity, slowly becoming the go-to CPU of choice for system builders, even if Intel might still have the edge in certain games. And unlike Navi, Zen 2's product line is already diverse, spanning 6, 8 and 12 core variants, and I expect more to come shortly. For the first time in a long time, you can build a fully AMD high-end build and the components will, at worst, be comparable to the competition, and at best, you'll get more for your money. 2019 has been a great year for AMD so far.